Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestrian War playing as a kingdom of Broadfield under the King Clozu de Kisau. He's an anti-communist in which we start another civil war against the Gorvan Liberation Army which I am probably going to screw this up very badly and end up probably using cons commands but we're going to try this. But we're doing it for king and country. Our beloved kingdom has been engulfed in a savage storm of civil war. The Red Tide wishes to drown us and destroy everything we hold dear. They want to take away our lands and our workshops and our homes. No one except their party will well, own anything. They're no more than ro robber rabbles, as bad as the wicked bands of Black Rock, Kling, or King Clozu. Lead your griffins of victory and salvation. May Eviliana guide you. Tighten the belt. Press censorship. Stand our ground. The reason GLA offenses have pushed us back. We don't let that happen again. Once more into the breach. Dear friends, once more, we'll close, we'll close the front line up with our, de with our dead. Indeed, dead. Uh, what is Kvizin peasant conscription? A city of peasant conscription. Let's do that one. But let's see what happens. We want to definitely rescue these guys out here. Oh, hello. It's not going but good. You guys can go around here, maybe? Let's get a hold. Our capital is, yes, exposed, which does suck quite a bit. But maybe we can delete some enemy divisions, yes? And not get deleted ourselves, perhaps? Yes? That'd be ideal. But if we have to use cons commands for this, so be it, whatever. I'm not opposed to it. Bro, how are they winning? Peasants of Sidia. Soldiers traveled to villages near Sidia, gathered local peasants, and read out loud the following message. Remember by the king himself. Hear my plea, the fish that you bring with us, bring us enriched with the tables of the griffins of Pride One for many years. The crop that you cultivate under the warm southern sun brought cheer and happiness to every little subject of mine. Beware now. As the Red Band is approaching this land, there will be no joy anymore. Their claws will take away your land, your food, your shelters. Join the royal army now? That's the only way to stop them. Hundreds of peasants chanted, Death the Red Glad. Death the Communists. While waving the pitchforks, did hundreds of others remain quiet, tearing their eyes, which we do. Conscript as many as possible. Well, what is our national spirits? Pride One Civil War, which sucks. Uh, risk of famine, which is very bad, too. Those script too many. A thousand is enough. Peasants will be disappointed. Oh, you can't you just can't win. Like bruh. We need you in the military right now, bruh. Trying to delete a single enemy division is impossible. What the heck? Cossacks attack. The Cossacks. Uh, the Griffonian hosts are supposed to protect us from Eastern aggression after ready to play in our land. But they have proven inconsistent throughout history, taking whatever chances they can to steal from us as long as the Empire isn't watching. Which is certainly the case right now. The brazen robbers have crossed into our territory and taken what they will, seizing gold, precious guns, gems, food, anything of value. Our armies are too busy with the civil war to deal with them, and in any case, the raiding parties are too fast for our armies to catch them in most of the time. They have inflicted substantial economic damage to our country, and for the moment, there's nothing we can do about it. Darn the Cossacks. Right, I'll be honest, like, if we can't destroy this division, like, we are screwed. This is so bad. What are we supposed to do? Um. Uh, network stuff. What can we do? Recognize reorganize supply network. Primary peasant conscription. I guess we'll do that again. I'm really at a loss for what we can do here. Hello, we can upgrade nobody. Bro, like, come on. Stand our ground, yeah. Tighten the belt. The nobility of the nation still has a good amount of food in the storages, which they are willing to give to the peasants. The king would not be tolerated in this time of crisis. Well, since soldiers confiscate food and give it to those in need, any arguments that the king should give away his food as well will be dismissed. His majesty must remain well-fed and healthy, of course. I think here that's super important. Fortress Buster Scavenger, adaptable. I like that a lot, but, uh... Still. Come on, bro. There you go. Nice. Well, we're going back. If we can just encircle two divisions now, that'd be great. Peasants of Prywin. If we want to do that, please go ahead. I'll read that again. A thousand is enough for now. Oh boy, they're moving around. It's not good. Nice. Stand our ground. A deep plan. Tighten the belt. I don't want to inflict too many casualties on ourselves. Um, press censorship. More stability would be nice. And get more political power, too. Well, most printing presses are owned by the Crown and producing propaganda every single day. Some independent publishers are spreading lies, defeatist ideas, and even communist sympathies. This cannot be allowed for can demoralize our soldiers and our griffins and ultimately cost us victory. We must stop this nonsense immediately. Can I promote somebody now? 
Well, you a guess, but you're politically connected. Bruh. How are we supposed to win? You, can't, you, you literally just can't win here, can you? Tighten the belt. Press censorship. It's like not even a manpower issue. Like, we just don't have enough of anything here. I'm trying to go in there, too, but still. Get a hold. Bruh. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can win this war here. I don't think we're destined to win this war. So that means you guys stop. Press censorship. A deep plan. Recent enemy offensive will push us back and cut off our capital. Our commanding officer must, must meet at once to couple the plan to defeat the Red Hounds. Only by working together can they form a grand strategy will win war for us. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we can win this. March war bands. There's a lot of political power. Or we can grab anyone of infantry here? No? Okay then. Entrenchment. Speed plus. That's not bad. Our army regrouping recovery it does nothing for us. Artillery's not bad too. Okay, we're screwed. Operation Boiled Rice. Civil War effort. I'm not sure that's the best thing to do. Desperate defense. Minimum training level, more more defense, more trust and speed. The Emperor's dead. You know what? Get out of there. Get out of this way. I just want to make it encircle my man. Like, why is it so difficult? I mean, it doesn't have to be. Come on. And we get one political power dead, which is not bad, but still. Body in Civil War, nice. I rip and delete them, come on. We lost a thousand, I lost four thousand. Like, we literally just do not have enough divisions on the front line. Militia? militia? Boiled rice, it's a war effort. Oh, come on. Kill that division, my god, Jesus Christ. This is so dumb. Honestly, at this point, let's just save and. We have 11 divisions. We might just be able to just break out and just like go for the VPs, maybe. We could try it. It's probably not gonna go very well for us, but we could try it. Just make it completely disorderly and completely unorganized. Deep plan. Our military officers met in a tent on a rainy night and discussed until daybreak. Many ideas and suggestions were shared, yet most of them were deemed impractical, overly ambitious, or simply moronic. In the end, though, one plan emerged requesting foreign assistance. While well, some officers, such as Alexandru, were too proud to admit, we're weak alone with their economy tatters and the enemy controlling half the country. Um, yet we don't have to be alone. Surely, foreign nations will recognize the threat of Red Glad's radical revolution and send us an immediate aid. We're going to especially like to wing Barrier for the de Almeridan, a seasoned old friend of the de Kizals, and soon have a senator to drink sour. For us to receive any aid from them, we must hold the port of the city at all costs. I must send a messenger to the Catherine and pray for B to Boreas. The city of the city must remain in control for us to receive aid from wing body. Controls, huh? Break their lines. Uh, despite the recent red offensive, we must manage to turn the tide in our favor. We must push our advantage while we still have it, lest the enemy recover. And that's right, command. Uh, conscript the unemployed. Come on. And we've been effectively cut. God dang it, come on. This is not good. Come on. Like, bro. Seriously. How, you're not you're not able to win this. There's no way you can win. This is dumb. Are you kidding me? This makes no sense. It literally makes... How are you supposed to win this? I command East conscription. Uh, well, that was a waste of time. Foreign economic aid. Conscript the unemployed. Arm the workers. Uh, the decade-long economic crisis and civil wars left hundreds of thousands of Griffins unemployed, blowing around in our cities and towns. We should cut them work by giving them guns and basic training. We should be thankful for if there's any more duty, more noble than the slaughter of the communist scum. 
Like, what are we supposed to do here? Like, can't even get anybody there. That sucks. We can even get this guy's a waste of time. And these divisions aren't good enough to really give the benefit of 50% more artillery. I guess we try Operation Boiled Rice. Try it. Bro, why did you stop? Bro. So we're in long term. Also, we're on, we are on A historical as well, so. What, what is the capital? Show me the capital. Show me the capital right now. Are you kidding me? It's right here. Are you kidding me? Bro, come on. That's so stupid. How much more do we need? How much more do we need? I do like to let you six though, that's nice. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Boiled up, uh, Operation Boiled Rice while we we're beginning to run out of food so it's a cursed enemy. To win the war, it would be necessary to sabotage the rice fields so the next harvest will fail miserably. Infiltrators have been sent arms and organized local peasants who are furious about the communist confiscation of the private farms. Together, they'll begin a campaign of sabotage and terror, burning down the new property of the GLA and forcing them to divert troops away from the front line. So much is what we need to turn the tide of the war. The dudes won't have any boiled rice next winter. Two divisions will appear randomly, or will appear in the GLA will have a higher chance of uh, inducing the famine. The supply line. There's nothing else we can do down here. They have nothing else to take, like, in terms of, uh, like, victory points, except for that one. Paints. Work for the unemployed. Our police forces in the cities and local militia. And towns have gathered an impressive crowd of unemployed idle griffins. We've been given a basic training using guns, fighting information, following orders. Most of them grasp the basics. And that is good enough for we have no time or resources for anything more. Now I'll send them to the front, hoping the comments are terrified by sudden increasing numbers. Onwards the brighter future. Modern logistics. Arm the workers. Uh, logistics win wars, not guns or soldiers, and sadly, logistics are primitive. When the soldiers are lying on foraging, a nice way to save pillaging and robbing to supply themselves. We must set up modern logistic chains with supply depots, dedicated baggage trains, and contracts with suppliers. Like, this is crap. My god. Come on. Just surrender. A gift from Garibaldi. A shipment from Wing Body right in the harbor city of today. Our Griffins greeted the foreign sailors joyously. As dozens of containers filled with the modern rifles and equipment were unloaded from the vessel, the captain told our harbor master that it was a gift from his majesty and wished us good luck when preventing the war. Boreas bus Garibaldi. We're deeply grateful. Well, we're not going to upgrade yet. We literally just can't afford to. Like, this is so dumb. How do they just crap out so many divisions? How? And we can't do anything here. We take that and we'll lose this. We'll lose this division too. I mean, my god. Seriously? Come on. You can't, and you can't do anything against the enemy divisions. They're too strong. They're just too strong. We can't do anything. You try to circle and destroy enemy divisions. It doesn't work. It literally does not work. Then they circle us and kill us off too. I mean, come on. Summer celebration. We have enough manpower right now. But you can't kill them off. It's ridiculous. God dang, this, this war sucks. Uh, military command. The meeting of our officers proved that what a boon centralized cooperation can be. Uh, it is up time we reform our army from a high form a high command and reduce the independence of officers. Perhaps increase the discipline will also prevent our command from being distracted by the raids in any villages that come across. Just kill them off, my god. Why does it take so long? Do they have any benefits against us? War of Liberation. My god, that's so nice for stability and war sport. Risk of famine, of course. The final push. They don't. What? My god, this is so bad. Oh my god. Are you freaking kidding me? Just take the capital. Why is it taking so freaking long? 
And of course they would send a division right there right now. Come on. 80, oh yeah, uh. Just kill them off. We lost Castile too. We're gonna lose the Civil War. We're literally gonna lose the Civil War because it's crap like this. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry to be so negative in the first like episode of this, but like this, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. I'm going to redo this off screen. I'm sorry, but this is stupid. East conscription. Uh, those hard times of war take a toll on the Griffins, especially those who are forced to serve in the Royal Army. Yet the suffering is a necessary pain, and we're needed more soldiers. Our high commands began to reform in East conscription, but for by example, clamping down desertion during training, relaxing eligibility requirements, and abolishing noble exemptions from service. Like this war's over. Like we, we just can't take the capital, and it's not even the capital. Like these divisions, yeah, they're weak and all. And some of them are really god awful, but still. We just can't take the capital. Which I think is complete crap. That's complete crap. Yeah, I'm going to redo this. I'm sorry, everybody. Expand the Royal Laboratory. Due to a decade long economic crisis and the years of the Civil War, most of our intelligentsia had fled the country, considerably slowing down in research and development, and thus hindering our war effort. Mason of Twalt wishes to address this issue and has proposed expansion of a secret laboratory under the Royal Palace so all of our scientists can safely work there together with their generous royal funding. Arm the workers. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. So while so far workers and factories and workshops are contributing to a war effort indirectly, we now need more direct aid from them. While the adults go to the front, the children and elderly shall replace them in the factories. All of our griffins, no matter that age, must fulfill their duties against the blood of economic aid. Asking for economic aid will surely be considered a reasonable request for our griffins suffer uh, from our shattered economy. We won't tell them that some of the funds will be used to fight the war, of course. Uh, war, marsh war bands. The terrible marsh is a death that incurs war, uh, wasteland inhabited by a few, even before the war controlled the region was tenuous. Limited to the rich oil fields in the outskirts of the swamps. We know that the tribe of savages inhabit the magical beasts and fill uh, infested marshes. And while they are backwards, they can still help us with the war. Therefore, we send a squad, a squad to sail along the Evie River and try to contact these tribes and see that they are successful. The tribe warbands of emerging marshes, armed with muskets, our soldiers have brought with them. Ready to kill everything in sight. This will certainly be a surprise to the Red Velvet. Excellent. Propone everyone in that squad. Put away the work tools. Tens of thousands of our factory workers bid farewell to the loved ones today as they begin the march to the front. They too have received the most basic training in this dire time with the blessings of Arcturus and Eveliana. They will fight like true soldiers. Each draft he has given a portrait to the king to inspire them and remind them of where their loyalty lies. Now their relatives, unfit for combat, have started working in the factories. Lack work experience and often have children to take care of, nevertheless. It's still better than having workshops remain silent. A tactical necessity. For military aid. When most countries see the war as an internal matter, we can convince them that a kind of victory would be a major problem for them, and thus persuade them to aid us militarily. As we are, we are struggling. I mean, I'll be honest, like, we are really freaking struggling here. So, we're still struggling down here, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, you guys go there. Uh, there you go. We're trying to push through here, but like, you can't win. I mean, is it possible to win this? I guess. You know, I'm not the perfect toy four player, but like, my god. Honestly, Brofeld's war workers. Oof. Not good. Warband of the Marsh. Oof, not good. But we're I mean, pretty much have to read. Um, because they, they get they get so many more supplies. It's not fair. It's really just not fair doing this war. It is complete crap. But you know, whatever. You try to take advantage of encirclements, but you just can't encircle anybody. The game does not let you encircle. For an economic aid. One of the few advantages over the communists in the wars are control of two major cities, uh, Providence, Sidia, and Kivestin, which you can't hold. Yet we're unable to fully tap on this industrial potential for economies crumbled and we lack the funds to support our industry. We now ask our neighbors to provide economic aid for emphasizing the health of sovereign or griffins of Prywin. It's not a lie, of course, but also us with the war effort. The telegraph wires will be busy tonight. Foreign engineers. Most of our highly educated griffins have fled the country to Wing Bardis, Sikamion, uh, Mion, and Griffiths. They're unlikely to return anytime soon, so we need foreign replacements. I find that the dead thing that you can actually win this war, when I mean, I mean, you literally cannot. Like, there's literally no chance you can win this war. Economic aid arrives, which does basically nothing for us. Today, we think we'll receive funding from abroad and brought by heavily, heavily guarded ships and caravans. We must invest these coins in our industry and hire more workers and researchers to our civilian and military factories. Can we be indebted? We'll be in debt of gratitude. And we're getting circled like all over the place. Like, you can't win this war. I'm sorry, but like, Broadfeld is meant to die. It's literally just meant to die. There's nothing you can do to make this any easier. 
When no, none of our neighbors wish to directly intervene in the conflict which in their eyes is an internal matter, perhaps we can gain aid from them. After all, the communists win, they will, they will spread the wicked revolution and bring ruin to the fair countries. Yes, send messengers to all of our neighbors. Tank request. Or tank quest. I uh, consider so now that something exceptional is needed to win the war, a miraculous weapon from abroad. Like, I just don't understand what, what, the, what what's going on here. Like, we try so hard to do okay and well, but it's still not enough. It's just not enough. I got a mom making necessary sacrifices. But for the love of God, it's dumb. You just can't win. Blue Food Festival. Uh, I don't know about that, but that was good to toast the family in uh, Unity. Well, whatever Unity they may have. Foreign military advisors arrive, which does nothing for us pretty much. Foreign advisors and volunteers have arrived to support us. The advisors are veterans with extensive knowledge of tactics and strategy, while the volunteers are eager to fight for our cause. We stay united against the Red Menace, which seeks to undo all we hold dear. Great. Well, we'll see. It's like Pony Power is not even the issue. Foreign engineers after years. A uh, brain drain with we lack engineers without them, of course. Uh, our industry has not operated full capacity. And any engineers there are who fled the country certainly not return until the war is over, so perhaps we should attempt to replace them with foreign ones. Out of all the nearby nations, only the kingdom of Griffin stone and the tree towns of Griffiths are civilized enough to have spare engineers, so we should send up messengers to send them to them. Let's hope their answers will be positive. Because look at this. You, sh you should be able to in instantly just kill them off. Maybe not instantly, but like quickly kill them off. How long? Jeff Foreign Engineers have arrived in Cydia, eager to work for us in aiding our in alien industrial sector. The expertise will be a Booner Warford. Thank you, Griffiths. Which does nothing for us to too. I mean, like, come on. Quest. Operation Violet. There are many knightly orders in Pariwin, which most orders should work in order to no military purpose. Some, however, contain the finest wars in the Evie Valley. We should gather the best of the best together, conscript them for the Royal Army, and, bring, and through rigorous training, turn them into true super soldiers. Because you can't win here. You just can't win. Like, and even when you like, try to attack them, you lose, but when you try to defend, you lose. There's no, nothing here that says, yes, we can do well here. Like, this is infuriating. <laughs> Why? Why is it like this? Thank Quest. There are rumors that the Skyfall, Skyfall Trade Federation purchased several mechanical beasts or, uh, from the pointy land over the ocean. Those machines spit fire and can drive on their own. The government recently constructed a military factory and started manufacturing the magical creations of secret away from the public eye. Luckily, one of the federal officials spilled the beans to a prince's mother-in-law, who was the daughter of the mayor of Fezera, and was visiting Skyfall. We should embark a party for the journey and sail west to acquire one of the few models. This model will be the key to our victory in the Civil War. The speed of the operation and reliance on the pirate ship crew having manager hires, as they were the only ones willing to do the mission, will depend on the amount of pay. We feel like kings by the rum. Give them everything they want. It's not like we can win this war anyways. My god, why? Like, why? Seriously, oh my god as soon as we like go around then they start encircling us like that Bro, what the crap is this about? Like Like we the, the, I, I just don't understand I really don't understand this war Risk of famine we have famine out too. this whole final push thing doesn't no, does nothing for us like it does nothing it, does, it gives them just slight benefits for us though like this means nothing. This doesn't help you at all. We have armed workers, which hurts us. <laughs> Expand the laboratory. We have famine. That doesn't help us at all. Ease conscription does nothing for us. Command courses basically does nothing for us. Yeah, I mean, you're doomed to die. Division defensive court territory literally does nothing. 5% literally does nothing for us. Oh my god, and they even kill off a- oh, Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I can't recommend this to anybody. This is crap. This is complete crap. I hate this. I really hate this. I mean, you should be- This division should already be destroyed. Like, seriously. I know our guys are not super strong. But, like, our guys have support artillery on- How did the division die or something over here? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if, if we get through all the focuses and we're still not doing the war and win this war, I'm using cons commands. There's no point to play this. If it, if, <laughs> If it's going to be like this.
We've lost 20,000, we've lost 36,000. And they still always have more division somehow. Always. I don't understand this. And they can move so much faster than us, too. So, when the winged knights arrive. The vigorous, or rigorous, and extensive training program is complete, and Operation Violet is declared a success. Thousands of elite warriors now stand ready to serve the king, clad in shining gilded armor, and wielding the finest weapons of the kingdom. The strong fists are loaded close to and ready to die for him in the glorious battle. Death from above makes their enemies kneel. Which, I mean, come on. Like, seriously, come on. Every beat counts. We have no option. The times are coming. We're ready to rape and slaughter. In the darkness, everyone must fight those who cannot be given guns. We arm themselves with tools and bodily charge, boldly charge against the accused cursed foe. May our give us the strength which we wish to smite our wicked foe. Long live the king. Long live Broadfield. Long live Pride. and the four with the help of the gods. The gods aren't going to help us. Like, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're horribly outmatched. Horribly, horribly, horribly outmatched. Like, every time you make an encirclement, you can't kill them. You just can't kill them. Their divisions are way too strong. This, I think, needs to honestly be looked at again, because this is just not fun. Because look at this. You should easily... The five freaking divisions! You should easily be able to kill them off. But no, you can't. You just can't. And all we do is get encircled and get killed off that way. It's so annoying. This is so freaking annoying. just let you go go here to here to here you shouldn't need to take out every single victory point every single freaking victory point makes it impossible to win or do anything here two divisions you should be able to take them out but you can't of course name of the king defender lands thousands upon thousands of civilians uh, have been armed though we have nowhere near enough resources to give them all the even basic training we have no alternative but to simply throw these elders, cripples, mothers, and children into battle. It is our last, perhaps only, attempt to our hope to push back the red tide. Yet a griffins are afraid for death and battles preferable to life under communism. Clean clothes of himself appeared in public for the first seven months. Where are red assassins looking in the shadows and nervously glancing around him? Yet he must utter discourage and appear on stage in Central Square. What is back full of griffins who had mere weeks ago have been innocent civilians? Not sure everyone could be here, here the king. Wing Barney microphone and his have been placed on the stage. <coughs> one of the only ones a prior one and, and as expensive as a mansion. Close to approach Mark Funk, clear to so spoke, dear my dear subjects. You must know that I would not force you to fight if the situation was not the most dire and desperate. Indeed it is, for communist scum and beating back our armies and approaching us, eager to loot, burn, and pillage. Do you now understand you will be forced to fight no matter what? Be thankful I've given you guns to defend yourself and your families with. So then close to his purple eyes lit up with fury. And if any of you think otherwise, that the communists felt their liberties and bringing peace and prosperity, I will say to you what other, other fools you are. Be careful not for creating their utopia no matter the cost. Otherwise, would they have ruined our country? Would they have burned our fields? Would they have murdered their brothers for staying loyal to me? Would they have murdered my gentle and loving wife? Clozu was panting heavily, a tear flowing down his cheek into a scar. Trust me, my brave subjects, you will receive no mercy from these barbarians. Give them none in return. Now onwards to the barricades. Defend your homes and families at all costs, and do not fear death, for Arcturus is waiting for you all in the afterlife. For the first time in a decade, a huge crowd was cheering for Clozu and chanting his name. He smiled proud of his griffins. May Avelia help us all. This is crap, man. This is honestly just a bunch of crap. You can't win. You just can't win. Close them um, out. Look at this. Look at this crap. Oh my god. How many... <laughs> this is this is so unbalanced. It's so unfair. It's not funny. The miracle weapons arrived. Yeah, sure. Uh, the journey ended and the pirates kept the war, but they didn't run away the money. What's more important, they brought back a pest horizon for us. We should organize a new division, push the beast of the battle, let the miracle weapon lead us to victory. Hurrah. Where's the tank is open, huh? <laughs> it's got nothing in it. It's gonna die as soon as it gets into the field. How does it get Kisau? How are these divisions not dead yet? 
I'm sorry, but like this is complete crap. This is complete utter crap. I'm sorry to the devs, but you know, this is not fun. This was not fun whatsoever. I know it's supposed to be difficult, but like Jesus Christ, I hate this so much. Uh, freedom isn't free. A long last civil war is over. Country's freedom was from kinds of secure, but we're gonna pay a terrible price to win. Like you can't win. You you literally cannot win. Like man for man, you have just have to just, just be like just be very gamey and be like, oh well, I guess we're just gonna go around him. I hate that so much sometimes. Uh. I don't know. I don't know what a focus even calls for. I apologize for being very like upset with this, but like this was complete, not just not fun at all. Uh, freedom isn't free. I'm gonna assume it doesn't really matter which way we go. Piece of steel, offensive approach. Mobile. Oh, there we go. Mobile warfare versus mass assault, defensive approach. I mean, we could try to go artillery. It's not bad. Art artillery defense, infantry division defense, division organization. It's not bad. Mobile artillery trucks strike first. More armor speed. Division organization goes down though. Infantry division goes up. Gets more attack. Huh. I guess we can try to use tanks. Try to go mobile warfare. I guess. Ease of conscription. Borrow from Floina. Now we're good. Avian nation. Steel factory. The mobile the economy, Pfft, as if. Division for division. You had equal numbers and whatnot. And yet it still was not good enough. I don't, just don't. I really don't understand. Uh, let's see, reorganize. Fuel. Where are we at now? Operation Team the Red Wolf. Government reforms. Uh, economic growth, continued propaganda campaign, infantry weapons, military growth, exile the Democrats. Humble opinion. Operation Tame the Red Wolf. In the name of justice, the king's order of soldiers and militia griffins arrest anyone suspected of either being a member of the GLA or sympathizer with the enemy cause. They, along with the numerous prisoners of war, shall all receive fair and just trials. The first suspects in line of the wicked leaders of the revolt. God, I hated the Civil War. Because I know I have played as the GLA as well, and they were difficult. But not as difficult as this frickin' nation of Broadfeld. Oh my god. Cannot recommend. At least for now. Um, I'm surprised that these guys haven't been demobilized though. Warriors of the Marsh. God, these divisions suck. Division Infantry. Those are okay divisions. Uh, armor Divisions. That's a, that's a lot. Oh my god. See? The division died. Good boy. Price Freedom. Brian has been saved from the tyranny. Uh, the communism and the liberty of Griffin is, for now, at least safe and secure. But the victory is coming at terrible cost. For the country lies in ruins, thousands, millions, honestly, like hundreds of thousands are dead, and most educated Brianians live as refugees abroad. Therefore, it's not out of witness apathy in the streets, even as the news of triumph spread. For most commoners, the end of the war means little difference to their miserable and impoverished lives as they bury their loved ones and continue their daily struggle to survive. Nevertheless, the king ordered military prayer to be held in Kivisin. Open up the spirits of his subjects. Many griffins attended. Only to witness rows upon rows of un undercooked and underfed soldiers marching in poor order, while military bands played over pompous, overly pompous music. The golden standards of broad fell the care were torn and dirty. Prince T Tomato, who watched upon with the prayer with his father, couldn't help but feel that the banner symbolized pride in itself. The wounds of pride must be healed. Exile the Democrats. Kill every single last one of them off. While well, the PLNL and any supporters of democracy and harmony do not participate in the civil war directly, Achilles proved that they cannot be trusted. The king orders that they must be exiled lest they begin a coup or another civil war. Economy laws, huh? Liberal Democrat. And then has been pardoned. Voice of Reason. War Industrialist. Prince of Terror. Civil War Aftermath. Well, still pretty bad. Expanded Royal Research Laboratories. Crown Protector, eh? Guns, uh, get some e tanks and whatnot. Uh, what else do we have here? Anything else? Ease of conscription, and whatnot. Uh, military training. Uh, I guess we can get some more steel. Why not? Screw it. Um, I would like more organizations. Okay. Uh, this guy point four plus point three. Entrenchment speed's not bad. Has completed victim freedom is free. Point three or point four. Attrition speed. Division speed is more like it what we would really need, so this is not bad, but a second on. 
We didn't have a political pop war. They show the civilian integrity of Broadfeld. Our soldiers and militia groups have uh, arrested anyone suspected of being a supporter of the PCB. Or GLA or any of the communist or socialist organization. Often family members of the suspects were detained as well, regardless of their age. Last time this was attempted, it ended up sparking a civil war, but now the strength of the Reds has been shattered and they are unable to resist. Thousands of new prisons have been brought to already cramped prison camps across the nation, with the largest ones being in Larios. And White Flower holds tens of thousands of prisoners of war. Everyone will remain detained until each individual's role in the civil war has been thoroughly investigated. Those who took up arms and fought will certainly be convicted of treason unless receive harsh sentences. Death rates are high as malnutrition and disease ravage crowded camps. Countless griffins are executed each day without trial. Mass graves near the camps fell quickly. I brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my kingdom. Well, they deserved it. They honestly really deserved it from all the crap that we had to fight through all that. They have judgment. The captured leaders of the GLA were first face trial. The king himself, along with his son, Tomato, traveled to White Flower's prison camp to witness the proceedings. The suspects, in face of overwhelming evidence, were all convicted guilty of high treason and were fit sentenced to death. Well, initially, they were being to be hanged. His majesty barked in anger that they deserved a harsher punishment and demanded their impalement, which shocked everyone, especially the convicts and the prince. Clozu himself had banned impalement some years after the kingdom was founded, but Simi had changed his mind about the matter since. Me too! General Ian Siomescu ordered his hesitant soldiers to obey at once. While they were about to the devil, Philip Rugg let it all know, and then his second command, Richard Spear, had been captured and was the first to be executed. Before his impalement, he mockingly saluted the king and said, Long live the revolution! One by one, the traitors were killed. Cynthia, Brandon, and Colvin. The last convict, Theresa, gave a glance at the prince, her eyes dropped with, distraught with terror. The prince gave her a pitiful sigh and returned and averted her, her gaze. As soldiers carried her to the sharp iron pike, she managed to get loose from the grasp and ran to Mato. She fell on her knees in front of him. I beg you, Prince, I know your father is a stranger to mercy, but surely you're better than him. I don't claim to be innocent, but I repent and beg for my forgiveness. If you pardon me, I swear to never betray my country again. Aeon Siomiscu immediately pulled his, out his pistol and, sh and was ready to shoot her before Tomato stepped in front of him. He turned to his furious father and said she generally regrets her actions and to ask for a royal pardon. If you do not give her a chance, then I no longer wish to be an heir to such a cruel and tyrannical griffin. Clozu suddenly glared at his only child and both surprise and anger, his fists clenched. Fine, he spat out, she should live for now. She has one chance to redeem herself. I would have just shot her anyways. You know what's having up the kid. Like, you made your actions. You want forgiveness? You should have thought about that before rebelling. Sometimes you have to learn in a harsh manner. And make. And sometimes they have to be set examples for other people to make sure they stay in line. A humble opinion. The prince wishes to once again meet his father and discuss a matter of great importance. Alright, let's do this. Easy prescription. I can't demobilize now. Well, god dang it. Strikes. Well, I wanted to demobilize, but we're not allowed to. Bruh. Bruh. Continue the propaganda campaign. Peace time does not mean we must stop publishing propaganda, quite the opposite. Our control of the press must remain firm, lest revolutionary ideas spring among the populace. We cannot risk another civil war, of course. Deportation. Unlike the Persian communists, the banishment of Democrats receive less support among our subjects. Members of the Golden Guard and the other class strongly agree with the king and use the opportunity to spread anti democratic pro propaganda. They justify the exile by drawing parallels to Achillea, where Democrats plotted with the socialist communists to overthrow the discredit uh, dynasty via a violent revolution. Clearly, the exile was a necessary action to secure peace and pride with Prince Tomato traveled to Assidia. Accompanied by a small group of royal guards, the crowded harbor was filled with deportees and ships ready to carry them abroad to countries such as Sikimion and Griffiths. With hasty steps, he went to the ships and headed to Wing Party and was greeted by soldiers. Greetings. What brings you here, Prince? I must find a griffin called Enrico Chevaldori at once. The soldiers not in obey, one read the passenger register while another went to the crowd shouting the name. Eventually, Enrico was found and brought before Tomato. He was wearing a black suit and his signature hat and carried a suitcase with all of his belongings. When he saw the prince, his eyes widened. Tom, what, what, bring, what brings you here? I was about to board the ship. You're not going anywhere, friend. Tomato gave one of the soldiers a letter with the golden royal seal. He opened it and read it out loud. I, King Kozu de Quisau de Broadfield, hereby grant a royal pardon to Enrico Chivaldori. Enrico opened his mouth in shock. What, how? The prince smiled warmly. had to argue with my father for an hour to get him to sign this. You can say, Enrico, friends are always there for you. Well, we'll see. We will see. Golden Guard, huh? Philip Redglad needs to die. Humble opinion. Militarized economy. Yeah. During the Civil War, we could barely provide all of our soldiers with guns, let alone basic equipment such as uniforms. It's unacceptable. It must be addressed. We shall massively increase military spending, impose tariffs on armaments imports, and nationalize major arms companies, thus creating a military industrial complex. Gains military growth. Factory output goes down. Training time. Well, not super good concern about training time, really, for now. We're going to need some tank cell. And more, with that, more daily army XP, so. Ay, oh, yeah, ay, yeah. ay. It's not completed. Demobilize their economy. Replace strikes with widespread strikes. Yeah, that hurts us pretty bad. So I hate civilian economy, though.
Don't really want to get rid of that yet. I do want to get this one though. Ah, I'm going to go to that one. That's more important. A humble opinion. Militarized economy. Government reforms. Now the peace reigns once more. Government needs to be reformed and modernized. New ministries shall be founded, each with clear responsibilities. A new governing state senate will be uh, formed with members appointed by the king. Privileges of the nobility must also be curtailed for the ashes of golden phoenix shall rise. Well, we'll see. We will definitely see after all the crap that we had to go through for this. Oh my god. You guys are all 12 combo with, but you know, honestly, the Broadfield needs to start. I, I know like, the, the focuses are there to like make sure that you maybe survive, but like something, make them thicker or something, or like give them at least another division or two so you can actually plug the front line because you do not have enough to hold the entire front line at all. The meeting. The prince took a deep breath and knocked on the door of his father's office. Never before had been courageous enough to tell his father what truly thought of him, but the reason events have changed that. Come in, said his father, so he entered. King of Spines, he hadn't always been since his wife had been assassinated. What do you want now? Another royal part for another traitor? No, I'll tell you though, I think about everything that's happened in recent years. Close Zoo rolled his eyes. Fine, be quick, I have a royal banquet to plan. Tomato sighed, closing his eyes and spoke. Father, I cannot help but feel like everything was ultimately caused by you. The famine was caused by our trade policy. The assassination of my mother was caused by you assuming dictatorial powers, and when the civil war was caused by you hunting the communists. Even though the griffin responsible for the assassination had been shot and killed immediately. You're hunting innocents for no reason, so they rebelled. Close his purple eyes burned with anger. The scar and shake. Twisting as a grimace. How dare you? How dare you say things like that? He stood up and clamped his fist on the table. Tomato startled, but quickly regained his composure. Father, I'm sorry, but I feel like I had to tell you my honest opinion. You keep trying to do things right, but you keep failing and hurting our griffins, which only makes you worse. After the impalements, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to call you my father anymore. It was as if a change had taken its place. What would my mother say if he, she saw you now? Don't you think you've gone too far? His majesty calmed himself and sat down on his chair. He stared at the nothingness, nothingness silently while Tomato wiped a tear from his cheek. You are bold, some for speaking against your father like that. Very bold indeed, but you are right. I forgive you this time. Now be gone. I have much work to do. S screw that. We're going militarist economy. New beginning? H who wants that? Are you kidding me? We're going down this route. And this is literally why I wanted to go this route with a royal dinner. Um, now this is all really cool. Largo, in the music terms, Adagio, Allegro, Presto. You know, slow. Oh, faster than slow. Um, fast and then really freaking fast. Consequences. Thorny Patch. Broadfeld Reborn. Screw that. I want to murder everybody at this point now. Carve a future through the enemy. Pretty much. Pretty much. Industrialized economy, too. Uh, our reliance on rice exports meant that a single epidemic of blight reduced our economy, making making us unable to afford buying food from abroad. It's clear that our economy must diversify. Foreign investments, liberalized commerce, and governmental subsidies uh, will all aid our capitalists and our enterprises. And their enterprises, of course, too. Well, can't get that one done again. How much we can really do? I mean, we, we don't get political power. Broadfoot is not so far fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Another rise of the economy. We'll lose that. We'll get industrialized next. And then a royal dinner, of course. Shortly after meeting with the prince, the king continued. Uh, preparations for a grand banquet in the royal palace. Members of every noble house and private have been invited along with all of their notable figures and invitations have been sent abroad as well. It will truly be a grand feast. Royal Air Force. I'm sure the Royal Navy. Ah. The Organized Army. The Royal Army that has stagnated for centuries was forced to adapt rapidly as the Civil War erupted. Now that there's peace, but we must continue to form our battered forces into a proper modern military, strong enough to oppose any domestic or foreign threats. Offensive approach? Also, we to go with offensive approach. The economy of was not being with auto twiddling of thumbs, but with decisive action and of savage blows. Such doctors gave us victory in the Civil War, and they'll give us victory in any future war we must fight. Broadfeld is a kingdom of brave warriors who are not afraid of a bold defense through enemy lines. A royal dinner. Today a grand banquet was held in Cavissin's royal palace. Visitors arrived from all over Primo and beyond, with members of every noble house attending with the foreign dignitaries. In addition, a surprising large number of military officers attended, many of whom were notable members of the Golden Guard. The king greeted everyone personally, shaking the claws as they entered, his son standing beside him. The king smiled, yet Tomato's gaze was absent and he barely spoke. The dinner's program consisted of a six-course meal, which the king was especially joy. A musical performance conducted by the winged body and Broadfeldi and maestro Enrico Civaldori. An hour of dancing and a five-course meal, which the king also enjoyed after the sun had set. The king held a speech as the guests enjoyed the finest sycamore on wine. My dear friends, I hope you have all enjoyed my banquet. Let this be a sign to you that a new age of bliss and prosperity have begun in Broadfield and Steed. If it wasn't for our brave soldiers, we wouldn't be standing here right now. Their brave sacrifices and their determination to save our country from God's communism impressed even Arcturus himself. 
Therefore, this feast is held in their honor. In my words of gold, I can trust, for I know they will defend pride with them, from without and within for many years to come. Close to his burning by their eyes, we're especially focused on the foreigners and the nobles. That he who conspires to destroy Bravo will know that we are not given easily. A baptism of fire that we have survived and has made us strong. Nothing shall break your kingdom long the broad fellow Vilia watches over us. Klozu pounded his chest with his fist and raised it high. When the officers in the audience saw this, they did the same, shouted, Hail Klozu, long live the king, long live Broadfeld. The other visitors appeared uncomfortable, especially the foreigners, and the prince left the room with hasty steps. Broadfeld shall prevail. And then we're doing long live the king. Clan Klozu bravely led his people through the summer of civil war. He is a uniter of pride when our savior, who ended the instability following the famine and restored the economy. The communists tried to undo him, and his rule were utterly crushed. Truly, the gods have blessed him, all most praise the infallible, glorious king. Codify emergency powers. After the famine 995 and the following unrest, the king declared a state of emergency, which granted him nigh unlimited powers. These powers ensured peace and prosperity until this evil communist ruined it all. Now, they are dealt with. These powers must be solidified with a new constitution, as I have already gone ahead and uh, made all these guys now 18 combo with. 10 tragic days, huh? Oh, well, too bad for them. And, uh, so we're looking okay, but we really will need to focus on tanks a little bit more. But, you know, it is what it is. We're getting more daily... Uh, XP, which is nice. Um, I do, I do want to go uh, suprem supremist, supremist ground support. That's not bad. Plus point four every day. That's pretty good. Point plus plus point three. Huh. Air experience again. Air superiority plus fifteen percent. It's pretty gosh darn decent though. But naval stuff. Plus point four. Plus point three. Capital ship attack and defense. Sub attack and defense is not bad. Honestly, I prefer this one. Uh, I guess we could really work on our naval stuff. That's fine. Long live the king. Codify emergency powers. Because why not? The uh, Larios Opera Performance, the King's Speech, Grand Military Parade. Uh, now that the peace has been restored, of course, the King plans a whole of speech and reveals vision of the future to his little subjects, assuring them that he has, last bench. He has their best interests and mine. Uh, or we come over here and do uh, Grand Military Parade. Eh, that's about well, 56 day focus, oh, Jesus. The parade following your victory is a pathetic embarrassment. This time, the King has ensured things are done right. Organized rows of proud soldiers in new uniforms, marching in unison with their wings spread wide and holding their shining banners of Broadfield High. Our Griffins can be proud of the army once again. Nice. Keep building, keep building. We need so many guns, artillery pieces, trucks, tanks, everything, you name it. Well, I guess, you know, embrace the future. Or motorization drive. Makes it pretty cheap for us. We have no motorized. Crap, that's not good. Uh, army training, this will not be bad either. But I want to get some more daily army exp uh, air XP, I should say. Keep building. Build as much as you possibly can. Comment side, if you want to this, please guard, be our guard head. Oh, god dang it. Why do I have so many stupid griffins in my nation? Boreas, protect us. Boreas, please protect us. Um, let's go to the King's Speech. Larios Opera Performance. Oh, well, I guess we'll go over this one first, then. The old opera house in Larios was badly damaged by red criminals during the war, but will now be restored to its former glory. The first performance following the grand reopening is an adapt adaptation of the folklore story of the little E.B. Or E.U. Where the two lazy and jealous shepherds plot to kill a virtuous, wealthy shepherd and shares wealth, which he justly earned with hard work. Sounds like a typical call. A uh, thing that communists would do to an upstanding citizen. Of course, now that we do have some naval XP, we could invest in getting a torpedo boat actually made. There you go. So that way we can get even more naval XP too. We'll make one ship, and that's it. It's going to take forever to make, though. Like uh, five, four, five, six months, half a year. Jesus, for us. Think that that bad? 56 days is quite a while. We'll get the Grand Military Break, get more, slightly more war support. Hurts uh, get, or helps our daily command power gain, which we don't really need too much. But you know, whatever. The King's Speech. A large crowd gathered in the Kvessen's Royal Palace today, listening to the King's first public speech after the capitulation of the GLA. Many Griffiths were eager to hear what plan, the plans for the rebuilding effort he had, for he had for very little had been done so far besides military reforms. Clan Clozu appeared on the balcony, flanked by military officers, each such as Ion Soimescu and Alexandru Loisiscu. He seemed more confident and secure than during the war, and his paranoia of his communist assassins appeared dissipated completely. He also gained weight, but his furious, determined gaze prevented anyone from mocking him. Griffin's a pride win. 
For a while now, we've enjoyed a reestablishing peace, but we cannot simply rest on our laurels much longer. The threat of war looms over, over us, dark and foreboding, but this threat does not only come within, but from without. Communism is not a plague that was born in Pridewinian soil, but abroad and beyond our borders, the store of, of griffin kind festers still. The crowd still expected him to say what he would do about the widespread damage and the social risks caused by civil war. This is why we cannot simply sit and do nothing, my dear subjects. The red beast is a hydra with many heads, and if one is severed, another takes its place. And not only do the reds threaten us, but warmongers and self-proclaimed liberators as well. The entire world stands against us, seeking to destroy our nation. Conflict is therefore inevitable. War is inevitable. Suffering is inevitable. We must prepare or else we will die, for only those strong can resist the coming tide, but worry not. For a nation is strong, it can withstand any storm. And every storm has to end and be followed by a peaceful golden day, and the hope of victory in our hearts must never die, broad felt shall prevail. For a brief moment the crowd was silent in deep shock, but then members of the golden guard among the crowd began fiercely clapping, cheering, and other griffins soon joined until most of them were praising the king loudly. Ion Soimescu squinted in spite of those who did not share their patriotic enthusiasm and whispered at Alexandru to get his soldiers ready. Traitor to the king would need to be interrogated at once. Broad failed shall prevail. And prevail it must. That doctrine costs. Uh, magic. Ooh, research speed. Oh, just normal research speed. That's not bad. Uh, you know what? That's 100 more, though. We've already spent a lot of our. I mean, how much time XP have we actually spent? Eventually, it won't even matter, though. Research speed, that's going to last all game. You're Boreas is not harmonic. Economy laws, that'll help with stability. Pick it up as well. It's not supremacist. Not supremacist. Currently, ruling party supremacist. Uh. These are all okay. They're not great. Good limited conscription. We re well, I guess we could really use it, but additional research speed. Whoa! So excavation tech research speed. Construction company. I just popped my finger. Honestly, let's go with bookworm. That seems something really different and unique. I would, something I would usually not choose. Yeah, we need to get civil war aftermath done. Reward the golden guard. Well, the Legion of Avelia, otherwise known as the Golden Guard, are a patriotic and religious organization with many soldiers and veterans among the ranks. They are fierce opponents of common scum, and the war should be granted high-ranking government positions. Their zeal will inspire all of pride when take up arms against the Red Menace. Acceptance of uh, supremacist diplomacy plus 10. Military effective cons uh, construction speed plus 10%. Golden Guard becomes the ruling party. Elections will not be held. Nice. But, you know what? I think we might end it there. King's Gambit. Accepted. Refused. Well... I don't know. Golden Dawn. King's Gambit. Oh. It's clear that many are unhappy with the recent changes, but those who resist will realize their grave error too late as they sacrifice for the greater good. Their betrayals made them expendable pawns. After all, the glory of Broadfield's vast more vulnerable than they are, and Gambit refused. Another civil war cannot be wrested. Already our nation is weak and broken and cannot sustain another blow. Traders will not go unpunished, but perhaps our generous and blessed king can grant them some mercy, so. Should we do the Gambit? The King's Gambit. Accept, should we accept the Gambit? Or should we refuse the Gambit? Let me know in the comments below. So. If you enjoyed the video, though, no matter how much I rage in the beginning, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. See what else we can do as supremacist Kingdom of Broadfeld. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.